Today I'm going to show you how to sketch an orthographic projection. Uh, this is a simple part that I picked up. The first thing we need to decide is what is our front view. Our front view is going to be the view that shows the most detail. And if you look at this part, of course looking in this way you're not going to see a whole lot of detail, but looking in this way you see the most detail of the part. So we're going to call that our front view. Now, we're just going to do a quick sketch to kind of give you an idea of how orthographic projection works. I want to take and just sketch what I see on this part as the front view. Looks something like that. Pretty rough sketch, but it gets the job done. Now, what we're drawing, we're drawing object lines and the object lines are all solid dark lines that represent the visible edges that you can actually see as we've already learned in our line types. Now that's my front view. The next view we're going to have to draw is going to be our top view. The top view is going to be shown like if I'm looking at the front and I flip it up, it's going to be what we see when we're looking down on top of it. Okay, so I'm going to just take and draw some projection lines that project from this edge of the part, this edge of the part, up to here. That's going to be the end of the part, and that's going to be the end of the part. And I'm also going to have the object comes across there. And then we're, we're just setting our thickness of the part right there. Now a drafter would actually have a scale or something that they actually had the exact measurements of how far they needed to go back. Or if you're in a CAD system, you would actually be offsetting the line a certain distance for whatever that thickness would be. We're just sketching right now, so I just drew it whatever I thought it would be. Now, we've got that. We also have hidden lines that would represent these circles. For instance, this counter bore going down in here, we could do a projection line up off of that and there would be a hidden line that represents the counter bore. Now that counter bore is going to be represented to where it only goes through so far. So we wouldn't have that going all the way through the object because it's not going to go all the way through the object and it would look something like this. These, uh, this other one would actually line up with this inside circle. And then you'd have the same thing with the small counter boards. I'm not going to go I'm not going to draw those right now. The next thing is this is our front view, this is our top view. We also need a right side view. The right side view would be over here drawn over in this direction. Now, we would have what they call a miter line in here that goes at a 45 degree angle. And then you could actually take and project over to where that hits the miter line and where this hits the miter line and then drop straight down and draw a line there and drop straight down and draw a line there. That keeps our thickness the same as what it is in our top view. Then we just project straight over here and then straight over here. And then again you would have your hidden lines that represent whatever you've got going on over there. Now, you would have a visible line, if you look at the right side of the object, you would have visible lines right there that represent that radius cut into the part. Project straight over there, straight over there. You would also have one where that chamfer is, right there, and another chamfer down here, so you've got a line there. Then you've got your hidden lines that represent your holes, and then of course you've got your hidden lines that represent straight over from here you'd have a hidden line and so on and so forth. I hope that helped you a little bit on orthographic projection and how we sketch and how the views are laid out. Again this is your front, top, and right side. We only want to use those views that are necessary to show all the aspects of the object in order to make it. We don't want to put extra views on there just to take up space on the paper. And that's why we're going to talk about 
one view drawings, two view drawings, and three view drawings, and where do we use those?